today we're going to be demoing on Epicor posting rules and how to customize them. This posting rule session will give us an overview of what posting rules are and who slash what, where, why, and how you might want to change them. <clears throat> While we almost always suggest working in a test system for any Epicor topic, changing your posting rules is a process that is especially especially critical to be done in your test system to verify everything works as it should before importing them into live. This process will be very similar in most versions of Epicor 9 and higher. In version 10.2, Epicor separated out a tab for customizations in the posting rules. That's the main difference that you'll see and also that there might be some additional transactions and things like that in higher versions as you move up in versions. Feel free to ask any questions during the demo and I'll answer them when possible or get back to you in an email if further research is needed. So why customize posting rules? These are some of the um, Reasons that I can think of that you want to customize your posting rules, needing better descriptions shown for your GL transaction types, better utilization of dynamic segments, change which GL accounts are affected by your posting rules, changing calculations, and have different posting rules for different books slash currencies or rounding options. Um, today, we'll only be showing the example of modifying descriptions for the GL transaction types. I will suggest extra testing and precautions be taken if you attempt to make any of the listed types of changes, especially changing calculations in the GL accounts affected. And if anybody else has any um, reasons why they might customize posting rules, feel free to put something in the chat window for why you have, what other goals are you using to suggest for posting rules. What are the benefits arising from changing your posting rules? The most common benefits we have seen for changing the posting rules are, again, easier reconciliation to the general ledger, flexibility to post the GL accounts and the amounts needed. Again, if anybody has any additional benefits they want to contribute, feel free to put something in the chat menu and we can share that with the group. What transaction types and posting rules are available to customize? While the transaction types and posting rules may have slightly changed between versions, many of the available types and rules exist through the versions with additional ones possibly added as you move up in versions. Here I've shown the ones that are available in Epicor Kinetic 2021.1.18, and there are 47 different posting rules. Um, you can see there's um, the first two columns, and then the second two columns would be below it, but you know, I put them together so that you can see them all on one screen. Um, if you open GL transaction types under the financial menus, general ledger setup, you can search and see how many are in your version of Epicor. <clears throat> you will see that the posting rules available depend on which transaction type is chosen. For example, AP invoice, transaction posting rule um, has 30 posting rules while the AR invoice transaction rule transaction type has 33 posting rules. So how to create a posting rule revision and modify the posting rule. In order to create or change a posting rule, you'll need to copy your existing transaction type revision, since you can't 
you can only make changes to draft revisions and changes are not allowed for active revisions. So you'll, you know, you'll have your standard revision that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis already. That's going to be your active um, revision. And you can make a copy of that and change it and test you know, it in your test system before moving it to live. And then modify your posting rules within the transaction type on the operations tab in versions prior to Epicor 10.2 and on the newer added sub tab named customization in 10.2 and higher. So in 10.2 and higher, there's going to be an operations tab and then it's going to have sub tabs of base, I think it's called, and then um, customization for where you can add your customizations. You'll also notice a symbol on the posting rule that is customized as shown. So you should see something like this little wrench on a posting rule once you make a customization to it. Or possibly a gear in some versions, I think, that would signify a customized posting rule. Then how to actually modify a posting rule. So later in the live demo, you'll see that you modify the posting rule by selecting which posting rule to work with, and then select either the customization tab or the operations tab, depending on your version. And next you can right click and choose add to add whatever changes you want to make. <clears throat> right below the current line shown. So on the customization tab, it would automatically have this for this green line already there. And then you would right click and say add to add the second line, which says the transaction test text, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and then finally you choose an operation or a condition in the lower left. So on, on this side, there's a radio button for operation or condition. And in this case, it's an operation. And the conditions would be, you know, if or not if or things like that. Um, and then in the lower uh, variable, and you can assign var variables, values, or ABT fields, which are the fields that are available for the posting rules on the lower right half of the screen. So on this side, you can use a formula from the drop down box and then choose for each part of the formula that has a gray or a blue link, you can choose to put in a hard coded value, which is what's shown here. And then otherwise, you can choose. Um, a variable, which there's certain variables already available, or you can create your own variables, or you can add, um, you can use the ABT fields, which I'm sorry, I don't know what ABT stands for. I tried to find out, but didn't find out. And, um, and those are the fields that are available for each of the different transaction types already in Epicor, or you can add additional. ABT fields. And so using your formula, you can get the results that you want for your transaction text in this case. So in this case, we're modifying the posting rule in the cost and WIP um, transaction type for the posting rule of adjust cost and adjust quantity. And what we want it to say is transaction text is going to say Karen plus Shana, my first name and my last name. Um, normally, the transaction text, text and these transactions would say periodic posting, which is not helpful to anybody. Of course, neither really is Karen dot Shana, but in our live demo, we'll do something more um, relatable. 
So your resulting change will then be shown at the top of the screen where you added the line. So this formula that you work out is going to be at the bottom of this posting rule, and it will end up showing up here. You can't, you know, you're going to tend to want to sometimes change it up here, but you can't change it up there. <clears throat> so how to verify your changes are working? Well, on the revisions tab within the transaction type maintenance is where you'll find how to set the status and toggle manually reviewing transactions. So you're, you're gonna change this draft revision to an active revision so that you can be able to work with it in your test system. And then you're gonna make sure that you wanna check the box for manually reviewing all transactions. This will, um, checking that box to manually review all transactions will hold them in the review journal when usually they are only held there if you have errors. And you can toggle the checkbox off and on for active revisions or drafts. <clears throat> then make sure to post an AR invoice if you're testing that transaction type or perform a quantity adjustment if you're testing the posting rule for that transaction type within the cost and whip transaction type, for example. So that's the third item on this screen to test your transaction type booking rule, perform the transaction needed. <clears throat> and then you would run the process that normally posts your transaction to continue on verifying your transactions are working. And then you would review those results in the review journal and slash or you could create a BAQ or dashboard to review the results. <clears throat> so make sure to not forget to run that process that will actually post your transactions or you will not see any results. If no results are seen in the review journal, make sure to post your AR invoices or capture costs and WIP, et cetera, depending on which transaction type you modified. When the posting is completed, you can see the results in the GL review journal or in the BAQ dashboard if you created one that links to those tables that are in the re uh, review journal. Once all of your testing is completed, you can export from test and import into live and decide if you want to leave on or turn off the option to manually review all transactions. You know, if you make a major change and you want to um, review everything as it posts before you post it, you might leave it on for a day or a part of a day or something like that to review transactions before you actually post them. Otherwise, you can uncheck it so that it goes straight to GL without you reviewing it in the review journal. So a little bit of a discussion on modifying more than the descriptions going beyond the basics. And other consultants have worked with customers to utilize the dynamic segments in posting rules. That's um, more than just changing the text. So, and I am aware that you can also modify the GL accounts and change calculations too in the posting rules. And again, emphasize to make sure you test that vigorously. Additions or changes can be made to functions, amounts, posting codes, variables. You can add BAQs to have fields from BAQs available to use in your customizations. And there's other types of posting rules. Um, there's pre-posting rules, header posting rules, post-posting rules, all within your customized transaction type. <clears throat> Again, if anybody has any other examples of additional types of posting rule modifications they have done or heard about, feel free to share with us in the chat. Okay, next we're gonna 
ask Fred to hand over the screen to Lisa from Modern Welding Company to work in her test environment. And together we'll show a live example of making a minor change to posting All right, Lisa, you should be, there you go. Okay, and so I think I have to request control because Lisa would rather that I drive. So let's see. Pennings. I think you may have to go to staff, Karen. Um, I did. Lisa is the presenter and asks for control. There you yes. Okay, you got it. Okay, did Lisa, did you? Yep, get a, you, get you should have in? control. Yep. Okay, so let me see if we do or not. Okay, yep, I have control. So as we mentioned, um, we're in Lisa's test company and a certain company and we're working under um, financial management general ledger setup and we're going to open up GL transaction type. And then we're going to search for which transaction type we want to work with. In our case we're going to do the cost and whip transaction type. I'm just going to make my screen a little bigger if I can. Oh. There we go. Okay, and um, we can see this is the active revision, the base standard, and it says that it's active. So the first step to making any customization to your posting rules is to copy that revision by Clicking on it and right clicking and say new, new revision. It's going to pop up with this box that says you want to create a copy in an existing revision and which uh, source revision do you want to copy. And so since we were on that one, that's the one that's listed and that's the one we want. So we're going to say OK and we're going to wait a minute and it's tells you that the revision copy process is running. Once it's done, we'll have a new revision listed in the tree area there. There we have revision A, which shows as draft. So you can name your revisions whatever you want. So I'll just name it my revision and say we're going to Customize ADJ quantity. Okay. And, you know, the only suggestion I have here is maybe um, once you get your final revision, maybe you want to name it with a date in there or something to, you know, say that this is the revision you want to use going forward and um, what you'll be copying to your live. So again, um, we mentioned that you should check the manual where you review all transactions, and that is on this revisions, revisions detail tab. You want to check that box, and that will then um, make our transactions go stop in the review journal before posting, and you can decide if you want to cancel the posting or confirm the posting then. And, um, you know, as you're doing testing, if things aren't working right, you can cancel, make some changes, and then um, try to post again and review the changes. And if they're working, then you can go ahead and post. So we'll go ahead and save um, 
at this point too. It, it doesn't seem to be such a problem in the later versions of Epicor, but in earlier versions of Epicor, you'll probably want to save pretty often. Um, sometimes you might get not responding or, um, you know, other things wrong with your revisions that you would want to save as often as you can. <clears throat> so now we'll just open up um, the rest of the tree here to look around a little bit. Here we can see within um, cost and whip, we have three major sections, the cost of sales, labor, and the part tran section. And the part tran section is the area with the most um, number of posting rules. And if we open that up, we can see each each of them also has what they call posting codes. And that is where we will see um, what they call the ABT fields. And so, you know, like un under job, you can see that there's job number, for example, and that it comes from job header table and the field is job number. So these are what, Epicor already has out there for you. And like I mentioned, you can add to these either within um, that area or if there is no area available with the category that you need, you can add a BAQ to the posting codes area so that you can get additional fields if needed. Okay, I was trying to close this back up. I'll just do here maybe there we go oh, maybe not there we go okay so that's the, basically the area that has what's available to you and then um, under the uh, rules area and your book you'll have two main areas the functions and the posting rules and the functions as different functions that Epicor um, has already defined that you can use. And you can also add your own functions. And then the posting rules is where we would actually make a change for our transaction text. So we talked about, we're gonna change the ADJ quantity um, transaction text. So notice this changes both for the ADJ cost and the ADJ quantity. And in earlier versions, there was only an operations tab and not these two sub tabs. And the operations tab, you could change what you wanted to on you know, the, the main main tab for operations. And I think it'll still let you do that, but it's better if you can put your change under the customization tab so that both you know, anybody who works with this knows, and when you upgrade, um, Epicor also knows where your customizations are and they get upgraded too. So you just, highlight that green text and then right click and say add and it puts a line below it like we mentioned um, previously and my slides so then to change that line go down to the bottom here and <clears throat> you can choose either operation or logical condition so logical condition has else else if or if and operation has many different choices under here. And for our example, we're gonna choose transaction text. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger. Oh, I lost it. There we go. 
Okay, so we want to notice when we change that up here, it says transaction text equals. We don't have anything defined on the right side, so it doesn't change anything there. So in my example, in the slideshows, I just use A equals B to do just two fields. And instead of equals B, you can change it to plus B. So I put, you know, Karen where A was and Shane on where B was. If you want more than just the two fields, you can use the concatenate strings. <clears throat> and that's what we'll be doing here but we are just going to show basically two fields um anyway but so when you click on the blue on the right side you can replace the first string here with as i mentioned in the presentation a value a variable or an abt field so if you choose value it gives you a, a static thing that you can type in a value if you want if you choose variable there's a list of already um, provided variables from epicor and if you choose abt field which is most of the time probably what you're going to want to choose because you want to get meaningful fields to show here so it you know, Lisa and I had discussed um, what she would have liked to see on this transaction, for example. So we want to see the part number and then the tran transaction reference. So we go following the arrows across to part tran, and you can look at posting codes and see most of the fields that you need for the main area. Oh, it's gonna be hard to get to sometimes on, on these screens. Might be under the details tab or the details group. So you can look there first, but no, I don't see part number. Okay. Yeah, remember you're gonna be looking for code. Not yeah. part number. <laughs> I was going to mention that. <laughs> so then we look under the part group and, oh, we thought it'd be under here, but it's not. But it's actually called code. And you can see that if you look in the tree, like we had um, looked at the beginning where we could see what fields are included. The code is the part number. So Epicor just calls it code. So we want to concatenate the part number and then the trans reference. So that one I'm pretty sure was under the details. Yep, trans reference. So that should be all we need to do for this basic um, customization to show one transaction and changing the text on that one transaction. My scroll isn't working right. That's why I keep losing the <laughs> page. So I need to get back up to where you we can see the revision in the tree, if you can get me there. You want that or? Yeah, the revision in the tree. Um, yeah, I suppose I can do it that way too. Revision detail. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So we changed our posting rule and put in exactly what we wanted. And now really to test it, well, you can test before, before you um, test it with your transaction. You can check the syntax if you'd like. Um, you know, if you made a lot of changes and before you want to save it, you can check the syntax every now and then to make sure. And you can do that before you make it active if you want, because, you know, once you make it active, then um, if it's 
it'll it'll check also before you make it active if the syntax is wrong. So I guess it doesn't really matter whether you do it. But you know, it just would help you to check it before you make it active. If you want to change the last rule you thought was the problem rule or something like that, you can you can change that before you make it active. So we're gonna go ahead and make this one active and we made sure we have the manually review and then you think it's not doing anything but it does, and it says ready but it's not really ready unless you can get to another menu item there we go you can get to another menu item or you might see the um, hourglass or something too but sometimes you don't know that it's doing anything until you uh, go to another menu item or something. <clears throat> so now we have to go ahead and create that transaction to do a quantity adjustment. So we'll go to general operations and quantity adjustments under inventory management. And we discussed um, having a part that starts with a B because we know those are certain parts that we can use to adjust the quantity. So we're going to put in, you know, two, well, adjust two. And we're going to put in a trans reference because that's the other field that we want to see here. So, um, And I thought it would ask you for a reason to. Oh, nope, I guess not. Okay, so that should be good. Oh, that's just because I did save after it already did it. So that should be all we need to do in quantity adjustment. And now we want to go and run the process to capture cost and whip activity. So we'll open that up and we can go ahead and leave the date selection that they have because we only really need to capture from today's date and we want to say that we're posting to general ledger even though it'll stop in the review journal etc so we can basically just leave this as it is and we'll click submit and then we should be able to check your system monitor. Maybe you can bring that up, uh, Lisa. Yeah. So it's already done. It was that quick, huh? Yep, it's pretty quick. Yeah. Okay, so then we should see our um, Our transactions in the review journal. Yeah, I'm under general ledger. Why is it still showing the costs? You're not seeing it right? Yeah, let me go here. Yeah, I see the, re you looking for re re review journal? Yeah, is that a? Yeah, I saw it while ago. It's right up here. Okay, I guess I'm not, okay, not at the top, that's why, okay. And there we can see um, transaction from today and the transaction lines. And if we open up the tree, you can see two transaction lines. And here we can see the description is the part number and then it says emug meeting which is what i put in the um trans reference so otherwise normally it would say periodic posting there and we can see that in the second part of it too i think we can see both of them somewhere oh your list maybe there yeah in the list view here you can see them both <clears throat> So, you know, if we think this is all working the way that we want it to, 
we can go ahead and say to host this. And since we're in um, Lisa's test system, we're going to go ahead and do that so that we can see then in the chart tracker that this description shows. So we go to journal entry confirmation. If you didn't want to post it, you do the journal entry cancellation. And then it goes away. Okay, now we should see chart tracker. Oh, I forgot to get the GL account number. I, I got them. Okay. <laughs> you may type them in. Yeah, sure. Good thing you're assisting me. <laughs> I, I need that kind of help. <laughs> so then we highlight that, and then we're going to look at uh, the transaction detail. And for this period, retrieve. And there again, we can see the description that we had there. And that was for one um, GL number, and the other one was another GL number. But basically, you'd see the same thing if you put in the other GL account. So, you know, if you have to make a lot of changes to your um, transaction type under the GLs, you could do that. I don't know if we still have that open. Yeah. So you could, again, copy this one and make another revision so that you can make more changes, add on to your changes, you know check it uh, every once in a while to make sure everything is working the way that you expected it to work. And, you know, a lot of times when um, I do these customizations, I'll do a certain number of transactions and then um, save it and test it. And then um, if those are all working right, do another uh, revision and then do changes to the other transactions. Cause there's like 250, transaction types here in um, the cost and web. Most of the other uh, transaction types don't have all these posting rules, but this one has the most uh, posting rules. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, just change a block of them and test again and change another block of them and test again. And then, like I said, at the end, when you think you're going to be ready. You can um, make your copy and name name your last draft with a date if you want. And then when you're all done and ready to move it to um, your live system, you can export it under actions and then you can export your DL transaction type and then import it into your live. So the that was basically what I had to show for today. Great job, Karen. Yay. <laughs> well, thanks, Lisa. Thanks for your this too. You're welcome. <laughs> and, you know, if you have anything to add to it, you know, that was the main customization you were looking for. Yeah, we just had the biggest problem with uh, our accounting department trying, trying to balance our general ledger and look at problems. And all it said was periodic posting. So they had an awful time trying to figure out where try to track down problems. So this will help us tremendously. Right. Okay. And then, um, Fred, if you want to go back to my presentation view, I got just a couple more wrap up slides. Uh, Karen, while he's doing that, there were a couple of questions and comments posted. Jennifer Lister over at Perlick had mentioned. Um, they had freight added to an invoice that was just a single miscellaneous charge with a division override. They customized their posting rule to override the department yep. to okay. suit their needs there. Right. That, that sounds then, like a good reason to customize them. Yeah. Awesome. Kyle Schneider had a question. Uh, he thought he had read somewhere that Epicor was in the process of changing the posting rules to eliminate the periodic posting process. 
and then posted the Epic Core ID number and was wondering, is that true? And this is something new that I haven't heard about. So it's like, okay, has anybody else heard about this? I have Kelvin, I, Kelvin, this is Bruce. I haven't heard about that, but I just went out to the ideas list and there's actually two of them in there talking about fixing that or replacing periodic posting with something else. Hmm. Uh, I know I, people have been complaining about it since version 9.0 came out. Yeah, I, I've not heard about that. So I guess we can try and see if we can find any more information on that. <laughs> so yeah, basically now is the time for any more questions. And then um, just a reminder to make sure that everything is in a test environment so you can test and tweak your results, verify that they are what you expected. And you may or may not know that Coda Bears offers a very robust customization for the cost and whip transaction types. The change the out of the box Epicor description from periodic posting process to much more meaningful descriptions. And you can visit our website, codabears.com, to see a brief overview of this product and other products that Coda Bears offers or send an email to our sales, sales at codabearers.com for any of those products or any other projects you might be interested in getting more information about. Also, we've got another question here for you. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Ramirez has a question. The best way to pull in a setting on a plant field to a variable to create a, a new customization. They want to add a rule to post the cost of sales, the COS to the sales kit component account instead of the sales kit parent account. They want to look for the kit pricing flag so they can create a rule to handle this. That would just be calling a BAQ probably. Yeah, well, the um, for department or plant, you mean, or for? Something else you're talking about. For changing the department, I mean, that might even be available in class of work, but I don't know what, what transaction you're talking about for that occurs when you do the kit. Oh yeah, there, there's, a, there's something with kits and their stock kit and whatever, but is, is that the transaction he's talking about changing? STK-kit was the... Uh type you'd put in the message. I tried to unmute you, Dan, but I, uh, it doesn't show that you can talk. <laughs> yeah. It sounds so, like it would be the STK that kit, and I don't know if you'd need a BAQ or if you could do it just using a, just a standard modification, kind of like what you showed, Karen. Yeah, you'd have to see, you know, like when we were looking for the part, you know, is is there a group that says whatever area you want to change to? So if you're talking about department, <clears throat> if there's anything that says department in there, or if it's not any group that says, you know, department or wherever you might find a department, then you would like, because it could be under just part tran details, there might be department in there too. I mean, I don't have um, it back up to be able to look right now or anything. So, um, but if it's not already there, then you can use a BAQ. And you know, um, if you want to send me an e email or if, if we want to get it just from the chat, I can dig into it more in detail and get you an answer too. That works perfect. And Jen over at Perlick, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Jen. Um, Kyle has a question for you, Kyle Schneider. Um, were you able to use posting rules to flex the freight revenue by department by using the sales category? But I don't want to answer that for you, so I'm going to hope I can unmute you here, Jen. Yeah, 
That's exactly what we did. And what we did was we put a flag on the miscellaneous charges for wherever we do want to flex. Mm -hmm. So we don't have it just for freight. We do have some other like um, um, override expedite fees or, you know, charge tooling fees. So that we made it so that it looks at that flag. And if that flag is checked, flex the sales category. So you probably had to create some custom functions for that too, right? And so the, this was done in 10. So it wasn't really custom functions. But it, 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 it actually is a BPM. But I mean, in uh, customizing the posting rule to say, oh yeah, yeah, use, yeah, 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 yes, yeah we you did. had a custom. I function. forget. I get confused. <laughs> functions versus posting rule functions. Yeah, I'm sorry too. I should have specified. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Kyle. Kyle, I want to just make sure that hey. Jen, before you duck out, but normally you stick through the stump, the chump, but I was like, hey, got a question directed towards a user. And Kevin, it looks like Bruce Kyle has got his hand raised. Uh, Bruce, I'll go ahead and unmute you. Oh, there you go. I have a problem with payroll posting for hourly office workers, cost being posted to production and direct time. Can that be fixed via posting rules? I guess, I don't know if you're using, you know, outside payroll or using Epicore payroll, and I haven't really looked into any payroll transaction types, so. Um, I've changed. You can change the labor posting rules, um, and you can take a look at like the department or the type of right. um, employee and change the posting rule to change the um, account numbers. So yeah, you can do something like that. Mm -hmm. But you were talking about payroll in there too. I don't know. Because you're talk right now, you were just talking about changing labor transactions and not necessarily payroll. So it sounds like you might be able to, Kyle or uh, Bruce, but uh, probably have to test it out to be sure. All right. Any other questions for Karen before we go to stump the chump? All right, Calvin. I've been doing all Tell me do it. You can't prove anything. <laughs> Make you the presenter. Thank you, Karen and Lisa. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.